Welcome travelers to another episode where today we're going to talk about top five things you probably did not know about Loki. So the very first thing about Loki is that he was not blood brothers with Thor. He and Odin were blood brothers, but not by the same parents. They were blood brothers in arms. So this is as in like cutting your hand, spitting, and creating a pact with another fellow warrior. And that is what Loki had in common with Odin. And if you read a lot of the stories in the Eddas and the sagas, Odin and Loki are two peas in a pod, very, very similar in character and very much anti-heroes in a lot of the stories. The next thing is that Loki had three children with a monstrous Jotun named Angraboda. So his three monstrous children are Hel, Fenrir and Jormungandr. Those three were born of the union between Angraboda and Loki. And Hel has become the dominant force in Niflheim, the realm of the dead. And within Niflheim, her kingdom is known as Helheim. The second child, Jormungandr, is known as the Midgard Serpent because when he was tossed out of Asgard by Odin, he was tossed into Midgard. And he grew so big that he was enveloping all of the realm of mankind and even biting his tail. There was so little room for him in the oceans of Midgard. And the last one was Fenrir. And Fenrir was known as the devourer of the gods, a very terrifying wolf that the gods felt very compelled to leash up until Ragnarok. And at Ragnarok, Fenrir breaks his bonds. Now, Loki had more children. This will surprise you. His fourth child, he was actually the mother and it becomes very, very interesting because this is the story of where the Grand Architect, a Jotun, comes to Asgard after the vanir Azer War and offers to build an impregnable wall around the city of the gods. And in payment, all he wants is the sun, the moon, and Freya's hand in marriage. Now you can imagine, Freya will not take too kindly about this because there's a lot of Jotuns that were proposing to her and nothing set her off more than being treated as a commodity by the Azer. The gods, looking to create a wager with this grand architect, said, if you cannot complete this wall with a certain time frame, and I do believe it's a year, that they will end up giving the Jotun exactly what was promised. Now, however, if he takes longer than a year to complete the wall, then the contract is null and void, and the gods get to keep the wall to whatever point it was built. And now the Jotun architect brings out his secret weapon, a horse that can stack blocks faster than anyone could imagine. And so all of a sudden this wall is coming to fruition and the gods are panicking and Freya is like, there is no way you are selling me off for a wall. And so Loki springs into action, transforms himself into a mare, seduces the horse of the Grand Architect, and nine months later, or how many months later, I have no idea, uh, a Sleipner is born, an eight-legged horse that Odin takes for his own. And his next two children are a little bit lesser known because they come from his Azer wife, Sigyn, and it's Narfian Valley. And Narfian Valley really do take a little bit of a backseat in the narrative until Ragnarok. And after Baldur is slain by Loki, or has Loki's handprints all over the murder weapon, they end up transforming Valley into a wolf that ends up completely eviscerating Narfi. And they take Narfi's guts and they bind Loki in Virgilmir. This is a realm where Nidhogg lives. And this is a realm of absolute torment and poison. It is said that every single time you felt an earthquake, it was when poisonous drops would fall on Loki's forehead, when Sigyn would take a break from holding a bowl over Loki's head to make sure that this venom did not touch her husband's skin. Now, another very interesting story, and this is along the lines of him being a mother, is Loki did end up dressing in drag along with Thor when they ended up going down to you guessed it, Jotunheim, to go get, what? Mjolnir. So the Jotuns ended up stealing Thor's hammer. And again, who do they ask for in terms of recompense if you wanted to see the hammer again? <laughs> None other than Freya. And so Loki had this brilliant idea to dress Thor up like the blushing bride, and he would be his handmaiden. They would head over to Jotunheim for the nuptials and the wedding celebration. Of course, that ended in a bloodbath. The next thing that you might not know about Loki is that he had his fingerprints all over the murder weapon that killed Baldur, and that precipitated Ragnarok. And so this is a very, very interesting tale where actually Loki ends up using an unwitting pawn named Hod 
to throw a mistletoe spear at Balder. And why was it mistletoe? It's because Balder was impervious to all types of damage because his mother went around and asked everything to promise not to harm her son with the exception of mistletoe. And lastly, I would say, is Loki is a very interesting and nuanced character because as many times as he ends up getting the gods into trouble, he ends up saving their bacon as well. No other story would illustrate this better than the story of where Thiasi, a Jotun, a rhyme Jotun, ends up stealing Iduna. And Iduna, she was the keeper of the apples that kept all of the gods young and virile, or young and zesty. And Loki was behind the abduction originally. He was the one the architect did, sneaking her out of Asgard so Thiasi could steal her. But then when he realized how much hot water he was in, he actually ran to her rescue as a falcon, shape changed and turned her into a nut, carried her back to Asgard. And with the aid of flames on the Asgard walls, they burnt Thiasi's form as he turned into an eagle to chase Loki as a falcon. So in summary, Loki is a very, very interesting character with a lot of great tales that just are begging to be discovered. If you want to learn more, subscribe and like this video. Until next time, Skol. I thought you were going to grab your drink this time. Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs>